Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to be talking about antibiograms. So antibiograms are resources that show how susceptible a certain species of bacteria is to specific antibiotics. We know that antibiotic resistance is a problem uh, and it's a growing problem and that different species of bacteria and even different strains of bacteria can be resistant to different antibiotics and which antibiotics will work and which antibiotics won't work is not always easily apparent without testing. And so antibiograms are basically an accumulation of local data. So this is where all of the data from a given hospital or a given clinic or occasionally a given community are compiled into one sort of database or publication for doctors to use so that doctors can monitor trends in resistance in a given clinical setting so that a doctor can know, hey, this species of bacteria um, we're seeing a lot of cases in this hospital and they're all resistant to this one antibiotic, I better start prescribing another antibiotic. And so these antibiograms are used by doctors to assess the frequency, how often uh, a particular antibiotic is effective against a particular species. And this is just to aid in decision making. So to help doctors make decisions about what antibiotic to describe. So for example, here I've got um, an example table. Keep in mind that an actual antibiogram is going to be very, very large. It's going to look at probably dozens of different antibiotics against a huge number of microbial species. And so we're just looking here at a sort of a, a small example. So for a given species, percent S means the percent of isolates. So basically the percent of isolates from any number of patients that were susceptible to the antibiotic. So we can see that for whatever species this is, 0% were susceptible to amoxicillin. So amoxicillin didn't, it wasn't effective against any of those isolates. N is the sample size, how many isolates have been tested. So with 42 isolates taken from 42 patients, um, amoxicillin didn't work against any of them. There were six isolates that um, were tested with cephalosporin and 35% of those isolates uh, were susceptible to cephalosporin and the other roughly two thirds were not. With ciprofloxacin, you had 99.8% susceptibility and 514 isolates. That's great because that's a large sample size, 514 isolates, um, and almost all of them were susceptible. So a doctor is going to look at this and say, amoxicillin is probably a bad idea against this particular species of bacteria. Ciprofloxacin, on the other hand, looks like a good bet. So that's what I'm going to prescribe. Some antibiograms also record the minimum inhibitory concentrations. So these, this is often referred to as the MIC. So the minimum inhibitory concentrations or MICs, these are the lowest concentration of each drug that prevents growth of each type of bacteria. So in an antibiogram, in addition to the percent susceptible and to the sample size, there might also be information on just how much, like what concentration of these drugs was needed to fully inhibit the growth of that particular bacterium. So that helps the doctor not just know which antibiotic they're going to prescribe, but at which dosage. There's a couple of caveats to keep in mind. One is to take into account patient history. If a patient um, contracts a disease when they're at Disney World in Florida, and then they fly home to Montana, and that's where they go to the doctor, a doctor using an antibiogram for local isolates there in say Bozeman, Montana, um, that's not going to be 
maybe that helpful if the patient actually picked up that bacterial infection in a completely different location. So taking into account where the patient's been can be really helpful. Also keep in mind that doctors can use other resources in addition to antibiograms. So for example, they can do a disc diffusion test, also known as the Kirby-Bauer method or Kirby-Bauer test. I have another video on the Kirby-Bauer test if that's something you're interested in checking out. But that's a way to take an actual isolate from a patient and test it against multiple antibiotics to see which antibiotics are most effective. And so, you can actually use those two methods kind of in conjunction. What I mean by that is a doctor can consult an antibiogram, decide to use ciprofloxacin, prescribe ciprofloxacin, but also take the isolate from that patient, test it with a disc diffusion assay, and they might find in doing that that this particular isolate, unlike the other 99.8%, it happens to be in that 0.2% that are resistant to ciprofloxacin. The doctor might at that point say, oh, hang on, ciprofloxacin is not gonna work for this particular patient's um, isolate. Even though it was the best guess based on the accumulation of all of our local data, it's not the best treatment for this patient, and so I'm going to prescribe something else instead. If you're interested in learning more about antibiotic resistance, I've got a video on that you can check out. You can also check out my video on the disc diffusion test to learn more about how that's carried out. If you're interested in antibiotics and mechanisms, ways that we can um, help fight antibiotic resistance, you can also check out my video on penicillin and cladulanic acid, which is a pretty cool topic, I think. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching Biology Professor.